Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and uh, hmm, finally I managed to migrate my Novodred server into my new server. So a couple of videos ago I talked about that I am planning to retire my Raspberry Pi and I purchased a second hand uh, micro PC. It's um, an Intel i3 Gen 6 series, uh, uh, really small um, Dell Optiplex uh, PC and now the old Raspberry Pi is, is finally decommissioned and everything is running on a new, new server. And I documented this entire process in a couple of videos in the past and also I documented the whole setup process in a document in GitHub, uh, which uh, I've linked in the previous videos, but you can see it here. So there is one document which contains everything about the main um, server setup and uh, there is a separate document which talks specifically on InfluxDB, Grafana and Telegraph. And you can see that here. So I just wanted to summarize all the, uh, basically all the comments that I used to install. So how I installed the various components, um, how I changed the setup on the, on the PC um, to you know run Debian 11 and Node-RED and basically everything that I usually run, well everything that I had run on my server. So you can see the uh, table of contents here. And the only thing I added recently is uh, these last two sections. So I had the Let's Encrypt uh, certificate on my old PC, sorry, on my old Raspberry Pi, because uh, there was a time when uh, I had the certificate installed on uh, uh, Node-RED and the Node-RED was open. Uh, and then um, I just basically closed that port. So Node-RED is not available from the open internet. And I'm also uh, using PVPN or OpenVPN. And um, I just uh, replicated the same install. So maybe I will need this SSS certificate in the future. So I wanted to install it so I can just keep renewing the certificate uh, every 30 days when it expires, sorry, every 90 days when it expires. And I've also installed OpenVPN. So uh, this is my VPN server as well. So if I'm outside and if I need to log in in order to access any systems uh, that is internal on my network or I just need to access Node-RED, I just VPN in and then I can use everything locally. So that's my, well, this is how I usually access it. So you can find everything here about this installation. And I think I also want to talk a few things about the, basically the Node-RED migration. It's not going to be very long because uh, it was much less eventful than I expected. So one thing that I wanted to do is I didn't want to copy files or folders over from the, uh, from the old server. So what I have done before I, before the migration is uh, I copied all the files from my slash home slash pi folder just to make sure that if I have any scripts that I forgot about then um, I have those on on my laptop and then I started to export every single flow manually so I have gone to through every single flow and I just did export and I've also started to make notes on a on a document on what I need to modify. So things where I have file names um, in either in the file in or a file out nodes and or the database. So SQL databases, of course, they, they need a file, sorry, a path as well. So a uh, directory structure. And I needed that because my new server is not a Raspberry Pi. So the user ID is not called Pi. Therefore, the uh, home directory is not slash home slash Pi, but it's slash home slash something different. So this is something that I needed to change. And the other thing I also knew is that whenever you migrate anything, or so whenever you export flows that have password, obviously those passwords don't get saved. So I was saving passwords like, um, actually it wasn't too bad. Uh, obviously the MQTT broker password, uh, tokens, for example, Telegram tokens, um, so you probably should go through all your configuration nodes and you can just do them here. So if you switch to, you know, configuration nodes, and of course there will be a lot of them, which is, um, you know, the UI related, you can just keep those, but then just, you know, open everything, which is uh, um, stuff like that. I mean, as I said, you know, telegraph and email passwords. I mean, you won't be able to copy out the password, but at least you can, be prepared on you know what is not going to work because the passwords are not going to come over. I don't know if you happen to just copy your old flow file and paste it or upload it to your new server, whether that would bring over the uh, 
the password most probably it would but the other reason I, did, I decided to do this export import export function because I knew that I don't want to export everything I um, or I don't want to migrate everything because I had a lot of stuff that I made for videos for you know ESPZ, Tasmota or hardware that I don't have anymore so uh, this was a good time also to clean up Node-RED and just get rid of stuff that I don't want to use so that was one other reason why I did that so uh, even in my document I had things marked that you know do not import because I I don't want to play with them uh, any longer or if I want to I still have the flow file so I can just import it anyway but uh, it's not something that I think I would be working on in the near future so once I had the full file saved and all the files saved and everything saved off the, um, off the Raspberry Pi, I was uh, able to shut it down. And when I shut down the Raspberry Pi, I went to my new server and I've gone into the network settings in Linux and changed the fixed, part, uh, sorry, the fixed IP address because I still have a lot of devices that reference to the MQTT broker by a fixed IP. So I wanted the new server to work on the same IP. So it was uh, 1961, uh, sorry, 192.168.1.80. So I changed that. And then once I rebooted the, um, the new server with the new fixed IP address, everything was working. So it was really easy to um, confirm that with MQTT Explorer because it just connected straight to my new server and I could see that most of my devices started to connect back to this uh, MQTT broker. So when that was working, I knew that, I mean, the basics are right. So the next thing was almost just to import the nodes one by one. And, but before I did that, I have imported all my nodes into a text editor. I use this uh, Sublime text editor. And here in this text editor, I just started to do a mass replace. So I started to replace anything which is slash home slash pi to the new folder. And this was, uh, this was probably the best uh, time saver because it's, it was able to change uh, these folder references in the file nodes in function node when I, whenever I had these uh, defaulted in, um, in, for example, in the JavaScript code. Um, and of course, it, it will find it in uh, properties as well of uh, various nodes. So I don't think there was any place where I need to change the file path manually. So that was, that was really, really good. So if you ever have to do this, uh, that's probably the best option. And I don't know if you, you probably can do the same with the big flow file as well. Just bring it into a text editor and do a mass replace. The only thing it wasn't able to replace is uh, things that I had saved in, in separate files. So .sh files that I was using for you know, certain tasks. Uh, but that was it and I just started to import the flow and uh, of course whenever where the password wasn't saved so things like telegram and uh, MQTT broker configuration I just had to create it enter the password I mean most of the definition came through but it came through without a password so I just had to go in and enter the password and um, it, it was yeah it was fairly easy I mean um, I just went you know flow by flow imported one made the changes I uh, just quickly reviewed the nodes and I deployed. One thing which wasn't working or wasn't working completely is these link in and out nodes. And that was also a little bit funny because, um, uh, I mean, I use this a lot, obviously, to link between flows. So, for example, um, this leads to um, a link in, which is in another tab. And what I found is that Obviously, when you import this, then the link doesn't work. But as soon as I imported the, the target, then it started working. So, I mean, immediately when I click here, I could see that it is going into the logging tab. I don't think this, yeah, this navigation doesn't work. No, no, it does work. So it's, well, not entirely, but yeah, actually I think it goes here or somewhere here. So that part, even that part is working, but I think I had one link where it wasn't working. So I just had to go into the link and, uh, sorry, it wasn't this one. Uh, why is it this slow? Anyway, so I had to go in here and um, I had to basically just untick and then take it back again and then done. And then everything was working. So that was, a, yeah, that was, that was interesting. But 
Anyway, that was a, it was fairly easy to do. And uh, what I did is um, every time I found a link node which was broken, I put a comment here and into the comment I put uh, like link with double K and then you can just easily, when you are finished and everything is in, you can just uh, search for link and you will find all of them. You just go through all of them, you know, replace them, uh, edit the correct destination, you delete the node, sorry, delete the comment node and then finally if everything is right, you don't have of these comments nodes anymore. So I don't think I spent more than Probably this whole thing took me a, I mean, obviously I did the replacement before, but once I had the old server terminated and the new server was up and running on the old IP, probably I spent another, I don't know, two hours to import all these nodes. And I mean, I have loads of them still, even with the ones that I got decommissioned. That was one issue with the database. Um, that's, that's the SQLite database. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, before I switched off the old server, I just copied all the SQL database files off. And, um, and I thought, oh, that's, you know, that's good. I have a backup, so, you know, I can just uh, shut down the old server. And of course, as it turns out, I mean, I didn't knew by the, um, until I had the old server, uh, the new server up and running, is I wasn't able to use those uh, database files because, you know, when I made the copy, there was probably an update in progress so therefore the database file is corrupted. So what I ended up doing is um, from the old database I was still able to export the structures of all the tables. I mean I have probably five or six tables so it wasn't too big. Yeah I created a new database file um, and in that database I created the tables and I started using that. And I've also created a new, uh, it's probably somewhere here, uh, here um, so I, I, I have a connection to the old table, yeah, the old Node-RED database, which is corrupted at the end, but I'm still able to read out most of the data. So maybe I just lost the, the last couple of, uh, I don't know, maybe half an hour or maybe just minutes of data. I mean, I'm looking at probably like 20 million records in here because that contains all my sensor readings from back to sometime 2016 when I started using SQLite. So I haven't, I think this database is probably like 700 megabytes in, in SQLite. So it is um, huge. And I'm planning to migrate all this data into InfluxDB, but uh, I just haven't got to do that just yet. So that's probably going to be the next thing. I mean, I, I've already done some, but uh, I want, want to do the pro proper migration after I do some tests. So obviously that was stupid. I mean, you should never back up a database just by copying the database file. It should have been done a proper copy, but at least I don't think I've lost a lot of data. So I'm, I'm dumping all my data to a new database file for the time being. And I have the old database file for the historical records. And at some point I'm just going to migrate everything over to InfluxDB. And I've already done some of the uh, you know, migration of InfluxDB. So for example, if you see this uh, MIF, oh no, no, actually it's here. So if you see the um, uh, MIFLORA sensor, I mean, MIFLORA is my, always my candidate to play, with, play around with. So I have already created some function nodes. Um, I'm going to create the data which is coming from MQTT and I'm co uh, converting into measurements. Um, and the same with the weather station and the pool heater, and then all goes into the an influx DB database. So I'm just creating these line protocol lines to create a new data, and then just goes into influx. And actually, this is the data that I used in in uh, some of my previous videos when I was playing around with tasks and you know how you use the flux query language. So so far so good. Everything is working. Uh, it was definitely less painful than I, I thought. I mean, I think I have done most of the preparation, but um, it seems to be, you know, quite easy. And still, what I wanted to do is I didn't want to copy any of the new Node-RED stuff over. So I was reinstalling Node-RED, I was adding all the components, sorry, all the additional nodes that I used, uh, using, you know, just a simple, the um, node installation, so yeah, palette manager and install. I mean, I do use probably like, I don't know, 30 additional nodes, but I mean, 
you know, it doesn't take more than probably 15 minutes or half an hour to install these. And as I was importing with the flows, you know, if I forget to import something, then I get a message. I come here and I install and then I deploy again and everything is fine. So it is really easy. I don't think it's worth the effort to, um, you know, copy all your Node-RED folders over and then risk the fact that maybe some dependencies are not working or you actually copy an older version. But I mean, by reinstalling and installing the new, all the nodes, at least I'm up to date with all my nodes, which was definitely not the case for my old uh, Node-RED server. So this is Christmas night, so definitely I'm not going to do any more Node-RED today, but um, I think the next plan would be just to start um, sort of decommissioning the uh, SQLite database, migrate all the data into uh, InfluxDB and um, start using InfluxDB for pretty much everything. I mean, I definitely want to use it for sensor data, but I would like to see how I can also use it for storing, for example, system logs as well, because I mean, at the end, that's uh, time series data as well. So I think that will be all for today. Merry Christmas and hopefully see you in the next video.